Hello everyone, I am Mohit Ahmed Siddiqui with another video of management accounting. Now, linear programming. Linear programming is a technique, is a method that we use when we have uh, more, than, more than just one limiting factor. In fact, linear programming is a part of limiting factor analysis. Now, uh, the graphical method of linear programming is used when we have two, in fact, two limiting factors. Like here, in this example, as you can see, material A, the company is producing two products, product X and product Y. Each unit of X takes two liters of material A. Each unit of Y takes one liter of material A. And the total quantity available of this material A is 70 liters. Similarly, material B, which is another limiting factor, product X, each unit of product X requires three, uh, three liters of material B. And each unit of Y requires one liter of material B. And the total quantity available for the, the total quantity available of material B is, uh, is 90 liters. Now, now if we, now the first thing that we need to do here is to, is to, uh, is to express this constraint material A. We need to express this contra constraint with the uh, with an uh, with a mathematical equation so as each unit of x requires 2 liters of a so 2x now each unit of y requires one unit of material a so for each unit since each unit of y, y requires only one liter of a here i am mentioning y here I am writing Y and this is equal to 70 liters, the total quantity of material A. So this is the mat mathematical equation for the binding constraint that is material A. Now, what does X represent and what does Y represent in this equation? X means the number of units that you will make of material X and y is the number of units of product y x the x represents uh, the number of units of product x whereas y represents the number of units of product y since each unit of x takes 2 liters of material a so what we did we we took uh, we expressed this constraint by 2x and then each unit of Y takes one liter of A. So we added one Y. So for one Y, I can only, I only need to write Y. So two X, it, it becomes two X plus Y and the total quantity that is available of material A is equals to 70. So the equation for this binding constraint, this is called a binding constraint in linear programming solutions. So this is a binding constraint and it is expressed by a mathematical equation that each unit of X requires two liters of A and each unit of Y requires one liter of A and the total quantity of A is material A is in fact 70 liters that we have. For material B, this is another binding constraint. Since material B is a limiting factor we uh, material B is a limiting factor. We have a limited quantity of material B available. That is 90 liters. So this is a binding constraint. Each unit of X requires three liters of B. So three X, I will represent this by three X. I will write three X for this. And each unit of Y requires one liter of B plus Y is equals to the total 
quantity that is available of material B is equals to 90. So 2x plus 3y is equals to 70 and 3x plus y is equals to 90. These are the these are the two mathematical equations that we need to solve to reach an optimal solution to reach an optimal point. Now, here it is worth noting that you should be good at maths. You should be good at making equations like I did in front of you. You should be good at maths. You should be good at you, you should be good at writing equations. You should be good at solving mathematical equations. Plus, you need to understand, you need to be able to draw graphs of these two equations. These, these are called linear equations. And by the word linear, we mean a straight line. So when we draw graph of these two equations, the graph will be like this. The orange line represents graph of equation two, 3x plus y. So here 3x plus y, this is equation two. The orange line represents graph of this equation, 3x plus y. Whereas the blue line represents graph of this equation 2x plus y. As this is a short video clip, I am not going to tell you how to draw graph of these equations. You can use Excel to draw graphs. If you are aware of how to draw graphs in Excel, if you know how to draw graph in Excel, you can use Excel or you can draw graph manually on a on a graph paper okay so these are the two equations now what will happen when you uh, what will happen what will be the values that you will get for x and y when you will solve these two equations now x and y x will be equal to when you will solve these two equations x will be equal to in fact, 20, you will get when you will solve these two equations, you will get x is equals to 20 and you will get y is equals to 30. You will get x is equals to 20 and you will get y is equals to 30. Okay, now you will get x is equals to 20 and you will get y is equals to 20. I will also not tell you how to solve these equations as this is something that you, you should be, that you should know from your uh, secondary school studies. You, you should be able to solve these equations as this is, this involves only simple maths, simple mathematics. So uh, this is something that you should be able to do from your basic knowledge of mathematics. So. When you will solve these two equations, you will get X is equals to 20 and Y is equals to 30. Now in this graph, in this graph, where does this point lie? X is equals to 20. If I ask you to find out X is equals to 20 and Y is equals to 30 in this graph. So where, where is X is equals to 20 in this graph here? X is equals to 20 and where is y is equals to 30. So at this point, at this particular point, at this point, yes, as you can see on my screen, it is showing that at this point, at this point, x is 20 and y is 30. And this is the point where these two lines are passing each other, where these two lines are crossing each other. So this is the point of intersection of the lines of these two equations. So when we solve these two equations, what we get, we, we get the point of intersection of these two equations. So by drawing the graph, by drawing graph, you come to know that this is your optimal point. This is your optimal point. When you solve this equation, when you solve this equation, what you will get, you will get the point at uh, which the two lines cross each other, the two lines, the, the lines of these two equations cross each other. And this is your optimal point. Now consider further 
that if you are told this is your optimal solution x is equals to 20 and y is equals to 30 you can say that this is your answer this is the point where you will maximize your objective function now what is objective function is speaking of objective function now for example for example if the question also mentions that each unit of x earns a contribution of $50 and each unit of y earns a contribution of $60 this means 60 50x 50x plus 60y this is your objective function this is the objective function and sometimes it is written like this since each unit of x makes a contribution of $50 and each unit of y makes a contribution of $60 so we have expressed this particular situation we have expressed this situation by writing this equation so once again you can see that you should be good at writing mathematical equations for these scenarios that you are given in the linear programming questions if you are not good at writing mathematical equations solving mathematical equations i suggest i strongly suggest that you go back to your high school studies and you uh, you revise how to uh, how to make mathematical equations how to solve mathematical equations and how to draw graphs of linear mathematical equations now so this will be your objective function as i was telling you this will be your objective function 50 dollar contribution for x represented by 50x 60 dollar contribution for y represented by 60y objective function so this will be your objective function okay now just wait a minute hmm here this is your objective function z is equals to this is our objective function z is equals to 50x plus 60y so now why 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 this is called an objective function just think over it since each unit of x earns a contribution of $50 and uh, each unit of y earns a contribution of uh, $60 this is the objective function and this as you can see this is concerned this is particularly concerned uh, this is particularly representing the contribution the contribution generated by these two products each unit of product x and each unit of product y and whenever we are whenever we talk about contribution our general aim is to our general objective is to maximize contribution now what we will do what uh, what we will want from uh, now what should be our objective once we know our contribution what should be our objective a general objective is to maximize contribution so our objective is to maximize this contribution our objective is to maximize this contribution uh, so the our objective is to maximize this z is equals to 50x plus 60y and from the optimal solution from the optimal point we know that the maximum x that we should we can produce that the maximum unit of number of x uh, the, that the maximum number of units of x that we need to that we should produce is 20 and the maximum number of y's that we need to produce is 30 so this is the optimal point as i told you just put this just put these values of x and y here in objective function and when you will do you will get an answer let's see what is the answer that we will get we will get so this is the maximum so this is the maximum uh, contribution that we can generate uh, 
at the optimal point so this is the maximum contribution that we can generate when in in this scenario in this particular scenario that is 2800 uh, that is 2800 dollars so what we actually did we prepared equation for the binding constraints material a and material b these were uh, which which uh, are our two limiting factors material a and material b we prepared mathematical equations we solved these equations and i also showed you graph of these two equations i also showed you graph of these two equations here and when we solve these equations what happens that we get a we that we get an optimal point we reach at an optimal point and this point is represented by this point is represented by the point where these two lines cross each other so this is our optimal point and on the graph we can see that this is the point where the lines of these two equations cross each other and when we put this so by optimal point i simply mean that this is the maximum this is the maximum that we should produce for both these units of, of for uh, this is the maximum this is the best combination this is the best combination of uh, these two uh, of uh, these two products uh, this is the optimal production plan this is the best combination for product x and product y we should produce 20 units of x and 30 units of y and when we put this value in the objective function our, as our objective function is to maximize our contribution when we put this these values in this objective function what do we get we get the maximum contribution that we can earn in this particular scenario now there are some uh, other terms also in this chapter there are some other concepts as well number 1 is shadow price number 2 is slack and number 3 is surplus okay now speaking of shadow price shadow price is uh, is additional contribution is additional contribution that you can generate from having one additional unit of a resource for example in this in in this scenario what if i have one additional unit of material a instead of 70 liters what will be my how my contribution will change how my maximum contribution will change if i have one additional unit of material a instead of 70 i have 71 liters of material a then what will happen to the maximum contribution by what amount the maximum contribution will change the amount by which the maximum contribution will change if i have one additional unit of a or if i have one additional unit of b that will be called the shadow price of a or shadow price of b slack slack is an underutilized resource a resource that is not a binding constraint that is not a limiting factor for example in this scenario what if i have another material material c that is although not that is although not limiting my production that is not a limiting factor but if such a resource exists if if such a constraint exists if such a resource if there is such a resource let's say i have material c and uh, i have a large quantity of material c let's say 120 liters of material c these two although material a and material b these two are limiting my production these two the these two are the limiting factors but since these two are the limiting factors these two resources are fully consumed whereas if i have material c in excess quantity what will happen that when i will finish production when i will finish production some quantity i will be left 
with some quantity of material C. So material C will be my underutilized resource. Material C is something that is although not limiting me from that is uh, although not limiting my production that is not limiting me to produce more units but this is an underutilized resource when i will finish production i will be left with some quantity of material c so there uh, there will set to be a uh, in that case we will say that there is a slack of material c surplus now speaking of surplus surplus uh, is something like uh, you have something in surplus let's say that you are required you are required to produce at least at least 10 units of material x or oh, sorry product x by uh, in some situations the question can it can happen that uh, you are required to produce at least if i say that you are required to produce at least 10 units of material x then there will be then there will be a constraint a constraint like this x is greater than x is greater than like greater than equal to you will use a greater than equal to constraint you will use a greater than a greater than equal to constraint for this you will use a greater than equal to constraint for this and uh, the more units that you have in optimal production the more units you have in optimal production for material x let's say that if now if you are required uh, if you are required to produce at least 10 units of uh, product x then you will have a constraint like this x is greater than or equal to uh, although here i am using the greater than sign as uh, i don't have a greater than or equal to sign on the keyboard or i can let's say i can write it like this x is greater than equal to 10 okay now since uh, if i say that uh, we are required to produce at least 10 units of x i am repeating it again and again though so we will have a binding constraint like this we will have a equation like this x is greater than equal to 10 but here in the optimal solution we have 20 units of x so there is a surplus there will set to be a surplus of material x of 10 units 20 minus 10 10 units and surplus arises surplus only exists when we have a greater than equal to constraint in linear programming i haven't explained here it is worth also worth mentioning that i haven't explained the less than equal to constraints and the the less than equal to constraints and the non negativity constraints the concepts like these but in this video my uh, my motive my objective was actually to my motive my objective was actually to introduce you to some of the very basic concepts of linear programming if you can if you can prepare equations like this and you have an understanding you can solve these equations you can write equations you can solve these equations you can draw graphs of these equations and you have concept um, you have good understanding of these three concepts shadow price slag and surplus then i am pretty much sure that uh, linear programming this one topic should not pose much problems for you thank you very much thanks for watching it was muhid ahmed siddiqui my number is given uh, my whatsapp number is given here and uh, you can contact me via whatsapp you can contact me you can contact me via whatsapp you can even call me if you like uh, no matter where you are wherever you are uh, from wherever you are uh, watching my videos and i will keep posting videos like this in future to help my students as well thank you very much thanks for watching it was muhid ahmed siddiqui and do let me know if you require any kind of help
थैंक यू वेरी मच